6.30, we'll open the meeting. All right, is there a need for um, executive session? I have one legal matter to discuss with the board. Anyone else have anything? Executive session for one legal matter. Legal matter? No, I'm moving to the land. Oh, okay. Wait a second on that. Sure. <laughs> I'll second it. Oh, did he move? Yeah. I'll, I'll, <laughs> <Sorry>. my, <laughs> couldn't hear what he said. Yes, I'll second it. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, any need to amend the agenda? I guess we have. We revised it before Monday noon, which is our protocol. Oh, so okay. The only thing we added was the possibility of appointment of an alternate member to the planning commission. Move to accept. <clears throat> Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right, and then the select board uh, meeting minutes of January 6th. Anybody have anything? Any orders? Uh, on the orders, I had a question here. Uh, on the new ladder truck, there is one, two, three, four. There's five different expenditures. I don't go through each one of them, but it totals up to about $20,000. And my question is, is uh, evidently it was uh, to prepare it for... <clears throat> work if you want to call it that but the other truck as i understand was uh, operating was in good condition and i assume had all of this this same equipment uh why wasn't it possible to transfer some of this equipment from the old truck to the new one mm -hmm. all right and what happened to all of that equipment that we have just paid 20 grand for is it gone to the dump or did it go with the truck when they sold it. Uh, it seems like uh, uh, seems like that's quite a lot of money that uh, maybe some of it could have been handled differently. I may be wrong. I just well, was not the add-ons on the new truck, but that was already in the price. In the price. Yeah, I, I can talk, you know a what I, mean? I can talk a little bit to this yeah. show. Um, as you know, when the truck was authorized for purchase, it was also done with the opportunity on the fire department side to use the capital account up to $6,000 for additional items. Um, and that has been done for the first two of the five invoices, which total a little bit less than 6,000. The other 13 or 14 are of, a same, of the same general tenor. It's installing uh, parts and pieces and uh, pieces of equipment. And some of them do involve transferring old things onto the new truck and mounting them. Yep. So if you look through all these invoices as I did today, um, it looks like the vast majority is for the labor associated with mounting parts and pieces. Um, we did do a few other things like uh, tire chains and additional LED lights. And there was some radio installation work. There was uh, power uh, under washing of the truck. Again, from all the roughly 20,000 that you quoted, 
probably two thirds of that is the labor it took for Lakes region um, to transfer parts and pieces from the old truck to the new truck and the addition of some new elements. So, and a lot of this equipment was salvaged from the old one and transferred I, over. I, I believe that's the case. A lot of it had to do with just the labor to mount them and to add butt, uh, bolts and straps uh, and okay, well, Velcro and this and that and the other. That, that kind of answers my Does that question. sound about right, Chief uh, Hooker? Yes, it does. Also, I think it included like on spot chains. The entire truck was undercoated, which was not originally in there. Stuff like that. And that, and by the way, that that any amount over that six thousand that was authorized to come out of the capital account will come out of the fire department's annual budget, which will mean that they'll have to watch their budget and try to trim it in other ways before the end of the fiscal year and at the end of June. Uh, in my mind, I was just wondering if maybe some of that money might have been saved, but it sounds like it was spent, and uh, uh, you reached your objective, so. I I understand much more about it now than I did. Thank you. Anybody else have any other questions? If Nancy Gaudreau is actually in the Swiss Alps, um, that's just a backdrop that you use. That is on Vermont's Long Trail. Oh, very Lincoln nice. Lincoln View on Mount Roosevelt near Cooley, Pennsylvania. Lincoln View. I yeah. recommend it highly. <laughs> You know, you signed this one twice. Oh. <laughs> you should pay towards the money. <laughs> and there's only one line left. How's that happen? We'll make adjustments. Oh. Oh, my. <laughs> Does that mean you've offered to cover those expenses for the town? Absolutely. Okay. All right. We have a check tomorrow. <laughs> town manager's report? Uh, yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Casella it has uh, completed installation of concrete blocks at the salt shed uh, site and expects to install the steel and fabric roof structure by the middle or end of February. Some of the roofs parts and pieces have already arrived. Um, as you probably know, the town office has an inclined platform wheelchair lift in the staircase directly ahead of me and that has allowed for interior access to the basement. Unfortunately, this 1986 unit is not working. Uh, we've asked um, an electrician to come in. Larry McDuff said he couldn't do anything with it. Uh, we then asked somebody um, who <clears throat> has an experience both as a sales representative for new lifts and someone capable of repairing old ones if he has the right parts examine our unit and he says that it's not serviceable. It cannot be repaired. The company is long gone and there are no parts available that need that would be needed. Uh, he has quoted a price to install a new unit, which is in your materials and your packets. I've also begun researching available funding options. And given that this is an ADA compliance issue, presumably there's plenty of programs, federal and state, to help um, municipalities install those units. 
by um, by July 1st, the town itself will have about $10,000 in its municipal building fund. However, there are state programs that could fund most of a replacement project. Um, one prerequisite for eligibility for the grant that I have in mind um, would require a consultant to come in and perform an assessment of the town offices for ADA compliances and to issue a report to the funding agency that in fact, we have a lift in need of replacement. So I've contacted the nearest known consultant, which happened. Did everybody else lose John? I did. My plan is to engage uh, that person to come in perform the assessment, give us the report so that we can then apply for grant funds to replace that lift. Um, following several meetings of the team working on an update to the town's local hazard mitigation plan, the town's consultant will soon, I'm sorry, will soon issue a final draft for circulation and comment. It will be forwarded to the town's planning commission for review in time for their January 28th meeting and will be presented for review and public comments at the select board's February 3rd and 17 meetings. Um, the town has received a draft audit report from Sullivan and Powers and Chad Hewitt from Sullivan and Powers will zoom in to present his findings at either the February 3rd or 17th meeting to be determined. The Depot Hill pump station project is coming along well. It is expected that the contractor will have completed their work to replace the two Depot Hill pump stations by mid-February. with only some site restoration, seeding, and mulching to do in the spring. The other component of the project is this much smaller scale project to automate the aeration of the wastewater treatment plant biological process and that will probably be bid uh, for work to be done in the spring or summer. I've heard uh, rumblings and it's now more official that um, there, there, there is forward motion on the Dollar General project at the intersection of Route 7 and Plains Road. At the next meeting, we will discuss um, a proposal from um, the developers and Quarry that owns the land right at the intersection on the northeast corner um, to deed over a strip of land either to the developer or to the town directly to allow for the eventual straightening of the intersection into a T. So um, Gary Kupfer has recommended that the town simply take title to that strip to make it easy for us to then work with Transit and the developer on the intersection project. But again, more details since I just got them late this afternoon will be in your packets for the next meeting and we can have a more full discussion of that. Uh, finally, there will be a staff meeting on Thursday, January 28th at nine o'clock. And as always, selectmen are invited to attend. Uh, we have limited space in person, but you're free to call in or Zoom in if you would like. <laughs> John, was that assessment cost for just for the whole? It's for the, for the whole, whole building. Whole building. Okay. And the good news is, I don't expect that we'll be zinged with money bad uh, inputs because we had a survey done at the time we did these glass doors out front in the new sidewalks and the sidewalks because that was part of a HAVA voting support grant oh. program, and so I would be surprised if we saw anything other than this lift identified, but you never know when you bring in mm, the cells. But um, that's a necessary evil mm. to go through that process nope. so that we can check that box in our grant application. What year was that, that last one? 1986. Oh, I mean the last, the last survey? Yeah. About eight or nine years ago, maybe 10 years ago. Wasn't that about right, Hank? Uh, I think it was, less, it was less than that. You think? Yes. Okay. Well, in the last eight years, I think. Mm. Okay. John, so I... <clears throat> The thought comes to my mind is uh, 
How much uh, is the basement used down there by people going in and out? Is it a rare occasion? or is Well, it- that's going to be a question I want to ask this woman. In fact, I've asked her, I uh, haven't heard from her yet, whether we even need to replace it. Um, there's two answers to that. First, the question is, does the public need access to our basement since there's no official activity happening? That's, that's what I'm getting right? at. Um, the other issue is, um, is um, does the lift need to be replaced or can we do without it? Um, so before I even confirm that we want her in, I want that answer right. because we might dispense with it. Although Chief Hooker will point out and the staff will point out that even though you're not supposed to use the platform lift <clears throat> for hauling cargo, that's chiefly been its purpose over these years. We can edit this out, I imagine. <laughs> could be why it failed. I'm yeah. not writing, but yeah. the tape it, is. It could be, but mm-hmm. um, they do have posted weight limits, and the staff over the years, in my experience, probably well before, was hauling up voting machines and things of that nature uh, as a means for quick uh, movement of materials. So... Maybe we develop a different policy about its uses uh, or limit it to certain types of weights and beyond that, no weight. But first things first, let's see if we have a legal obligation to replace it. Right. In regards to the intersection down here, uh, when they do get around to fix Route 7, mm-hmm. uh, is it very possible that that could be part of their project in the Perceived the future. Well, what they're uh, talking about, Joe, is to square that intersection. You're talking about squaring that intersection. I understand. That's a good idea. Right. I don't think Dollar General can wait till 2026 well, or 2028. Uh, there. I, 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 uh, there will be the benefit of a sidewalk along the road there yeah. to hopefully marry up with the sidewalk that is intended. I think it's part of the plan to do down the Plains Road frontage. So there will be, at some point, I'm sure, enhancements when the road project comes through. But what we're talking about is the Plains Road approach to Route 7. It just seems like uh, in the long run, with with the improvement of Route 7 coming, that uh, there ought to be some connection between those projects. At the very least, Joe, it's a good idea for us to point out to the Dollar General folks that they should coordinate as best they can with new trends on whatever design is in place now. As we've learned, that isn't always the final word, but it's better to work with as much information as, as is available now. Well, and isn't Dollar General re- going to be responsible for making that change anyway? Yes, yes. So it doesn't really, I mean, they're paying for it. Right. The sooner the better. Right. Well, true. Uh, but if it seems like a shame to... Go and fix it, and then have the state come yeah. along and tear be, it all out and fix it, it, it be, over. It'd be, it'd be foolish of them not to consult, and I will offer that idea. I'm sure they have thought about it, but I'll make sure they have. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions for John? All right, select board member remarks. I got a couple things. Uh, Rutland Regional Planning Commission meeting last night, um, the regional committee. Uh, they gave a letter one, which is no regional impact and meets the regional plan to the Cornhill Solar Project. So that oh, they, okay. that got approval. Um, the main meeting, I lost internet partway through it, so I only got through part of that. Uh, another thing I have, I've had a resident of the town um, has a personnel issue that he would like to discuss in private with the board. So if that would, could possibly be put in our executive session for next meeting. Okay. That's all I've got. Anyone else? Dave, if you, um, if you want to um, submit anything, any kind of written summary in advance of the next meeting about your personal issue, great for them to chew on, but otherwise we can just talk about it. Okay. All right. I'll let them know. <laughs> All right, any public comment? Butch? 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Just just a couple of quickies uh, and one on process on the meeting tonight. But uh, to your uh, to your lift down uh, down in the basement, uh, I would remind you that you're talking about public access to the basement. But you also have to consider employee access to the basement. So without putting a lift in there, you could create an issue with ADA and could create a problem in the hiring process that you hire somebody that was less than mobile uh, that would have to get into the basement. So that's something that I think John will hear about, uh, but you have to consider employees also. Uh, the other, I have three things. The other thing is, is, is on grants. Uh, the building community grants program is ongoing uh, and you might consider applying for those grants uh, to help you with that lift. Uh, the next round of grants will be coming out in June. And also, and I think these grants would apply to the fencing project at the at the rec area uh, under, the, under the recreational facilities grants portion of those grants. So uh, I would urge you not to forget those those uh, those grant opportunities that that do uh, that do come along. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, there was a building communities grant uh, under the uh, uh, regional economic development grants so that was. Uh, awarded to uh, Keys 2 this year and, and Representative Jerome is the chair of that awards committee. So those are the type of things that are under the radar sometimes, but they're important community grants that anybody in the community, and it's just not limited to municipals that have a, a non, it's, it's, it's okay for nonprofits and others to, to apply for those grants and I would urge you to do that. And then thirdly, John, or, or uh, Madam Chair, you may consider uh, talking about your, uh, the uh, logistics uh, for town meeting after uh, your guests have been heard from yet, because I think it's gonna be kind of a, a, a medium long conversation because we got the directives from the Secretary of State this afternoon on how things are being conducted. And you may want to uh, take some time to listen to that. And I think, uh, I think Helen, uh, the, the town clerk will be here for that also if she's not already here. So just, just a suggestion on the meeting so that the public doesn't have to listen to us drone through that process. Thanks, we did the order that's, that's, that's that's appropriate. Yeah, that's what my BCA hat on. The other one was my representative hats. So gotta change hats quickly. So thank you. All right, thank you. Any other public comments? Hi, Stephanie. Good evening. I just want to say hello. I was going to mention um, the town meeting information as well, but I'm, I'd sent everything to John and to Helen, make sure they had the all the uh, final words and uh, about the about the bill and the frequently asked questions. So I think everyone has all the information they need. And uh, then the Secretary of State ruling uh, rules came out today as well. And I, I think that's it. I, I'm sure Butch. Um, Right, I went out up to speed about this legislative session and how our priorities are going to center around COVID-19 relief and um, getting through those actions first. Um, and then uh, be looking at those bills and working on those bills um, to make sure that the state does well through COVID and we can help out as many businesses and people as possible. And we've already been discussing that in, in my committee, working on um, potentially more economic recovery grants or micro business loans um, or um, uh, or the other thing we're talking about today, um, emergency recovery grants and, um, and additional workforce training programs. So as that comes up, I'll make sure to um, forward any information to John that he can then provide to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, then we will, um, I guess then we'll move into um, discussing public hearing on the Pittsford Village Farm grant writing effort. So does this require adjourning or adjourning the select board meeting temporarily? Recessing, Recessing. Oh. Recessing yes. Until in an open okay. public hearing. Consider it done. Okay. <laughs> it's waiting for like a ding or something. Nope. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Louis Goodrell with Donna Wilson representing the Pittsford Village Farm. Thank you, members of the select board and John Hammerstock, for hosting this public meeting this evening. Thank you for your support and assistance in the proposed application for a Vermont Community Development Program planning grant. The Pitcher Village Farm is pursuing the renovations of the farmhouse in order to serve the present and future needs of our community. 
The uses for the building are based on consensus from community meetings and are articulated on the strategic plan. The strategic plan can be viewed on the Pittsburgh Village Farm website. And we're gonna let Nancy, if she can, um, show her screen. And what we wanna do is just, you can put in the same word, it works. <laughs> so Nancy, just describe what you're doing. Okay, so this is our website at pittsfordvillagefarm.org. And it's recently been refurbished by our tech crew and they, I think, did a really nice job. So if you haven't seen it recently, you may want to um, go visit it again. So how you get in there is you click enter right in the center of the screen. And there will be a menu across the top with some drop downs on occasions and we'll further develop that in time. And if you go to about, there's history, board of directors and strategic plan. And here, it, excuse me, is the strategic plan. You can scroll down, it's fairly somewhat lengthy, but I um, would encourage you to um, take a look at it sometime. It's a, there's some nice pictures as well as interesting dialogue and um, you can find out more about what, what the plans are. So that's, that's that. Thank you, Nancy. Yes. And we do encourage and welcome anyone to access the site and just to review the plans with us and the information and all the other information on that site. The proposed uses for the farmhouse are identified as an early childhood education center, a community center, retail space, and office space. We've been working with Michael Wisniewski of Duncan Wisniewski Architecture in developing the conceptual plans for the building renovations. A copy of the proposed building renovation drawings is available for viewing at the Pittsburgh town offices. So they're here at the office for viewing. What we do is we'd like to go through some of the drawings. So on page one, which is it's two, back up. So on page one, or it depicts isometric views of the exterior modification. The top right and bottom right images show the ground floor being designed for an early childhood education center, designed for 12 children ages infant to three years old. The two views on the right show the modifications to the porches, the building, and the landscape. Well, there's some significant changes. Now we're gonna to move to page six. Now on page six, this provides a plan view of the early childhood edu education center. And of the 12 children, it accommodates four infants and eight toddlers. That's how it's designed. The barn being over here, just to get you. Yeah, so it'll be. I'm sliding over to page seven. The first. first floor is shown on page seven. It's proposed to be designed as a community center on the western end. With retail spaces on the east end. The front of the house. Yeah, the east end faces Elm Street, faces Camutas, which makes it more sensible to have a retail space on Elm Street. And the space has been allocated for a community kitchen, more or less central. And moving to page eight. Page eight is designed as a second floor designed as an office space and flexible spaces. It's a little bit uh, arbitrary right now what we want to use the space for. We're focused on making sure we have the, the flow through the building, correct. The bathroom facility is in there, the stairs in there, but the, we expect the, the office spaces to be a flexible space. And in terms of construction, renovation of this floor is proposed to be the last phase of our construction. It's uh, not expected in the near future. So I'd like to slip back to page two. Page two provides conceptual details of the site modifications for access and parking. The proposed layout would accommodate parking for 40 vehicles. Here's the barn, just to get you in the house. 
14 parking spaces along the gravel drive are proposed to be grass surfaces in order to maintain maximum green space. And again, a copy of the architectural drawings are available at the Pittsburgh Town Offices for review, anybody to review. Before we continue, does anyone have any questions? Donna? Okay. Pittsburgh Village Farm um, through the town of Pittsburgh is proposing to apply for the Vermont Community Development Program Planning Grant. Through the architectural drawings, um, though the architectural drawings have clearly defined our concepts for the building, the drawings are insufficient for construction at this time. The planning grant would be used to prepare architectural, structural, and e electrical plans, details and specifications sufficient for the construction of the restoration of the house. The funds would be used for civil engineering design, for site modifications, road work, parking, and drainage. In addition, the funds would be used for various required studies and consultants, including the environmental review, historic preservation, archeology span review, capital campaign fundraising consultant, and an early childhood education consultant. The deadline for this grant application is April 1st, 2021. The maximum allotment, allotment or allocation is um, $60,000. There is a 10% match requirement will be paid for by the Pittsburgh Village Farm. There would be no respons financial responsibility for the town of Pittsburgh who would administer the grant in collaboration with the Pittsford Village Farm. And a portion of the grant budget would be used to cover any um, of the town's administrative costs, which I've talked to John briefly about. This is our proposed project. And do you have any questions? I gather that there was initially a, a deadline of February. However, that funding is, has dried up the next round is in April and for a June decision. Is that the idea? Yes, that's yes. correct. Yes. It, there is no funds available in February. That was our target date was the ninth, but mm -hmm. no money. Yes. Uh, I have a question. Uh, this property is privately owned, right? No, no, it is not. Okay. And then again, that I'm so thankful that you brought that up. This property is owned in a nonprofit. Okay, the Pittsford Village Farm. And actually the, the business title on the Secretary of State's um, site is Pittsford Preservation Corps um, doing business as Pittsford Village Farm. So yes, this is not this is not public. I mean this is a nonprofit. I thought the Baird family bought that property. Right, but then it was transferred to the Pittsford Village Farm. Because I'm just sitting here thinking, and your ideas are probably great. I have no problem. Mm -hmm. But shouldn't the planning commission be the ones to, well, give, we're, we're, we're to give you either a yay or an nay on what to go? We, we went through a per big permit process here a number, quite a few years yeah, back. Right. And uh, we had all kinds of trouble because of one neighbor who objected. Mm -hmm. But once that was straightened away, <laughs> we're able to continue. <laughs> but the uh, first of all, we had to get a zoning permit, which was uh, a uh, permit to what we wanted to with our land. And the planning commission had to review it <laughs> to make sure that it fell within the criteria that was allowable. And uh, so shouldn't the planning commission be looking at this they, as they one are. of the as one of the first, don't you want to get their approval mm -hmm. we're on the agenda. before you? Yeah, we're, I talked to Mark. I don't. I don't see where the town, I'm this uh, us as Sleitman representing the voters of this town, why should we have any say in it, yay or nay? If the plan, if it meets the planning commission regulations. It meets the zoning regulations, and I'm sure you've got labor and industries from the state level to deal with. If it meets all of those criteria, why are you selling it 
uh, approaching the townspeople of representatives to sell it to us. Because the planning grant is going to be funneled through the town of Pittsburgh. That's how this is set up with the Vermont Community Development Program grant. That's the way it's done. And since we're part of the designated village and that was part of that whole plan with the state so that they, we could get this kind of grant money. It's and only let, available to municipalities. Yes. Yeah. So, and then I just wanted to let you know too that I talked to Mark about a month ago. So we set Mark up- Mark Winslow at the planning you know, commission. Sorry, yeah, Mark Winslow. And um, to get this, since they only meet once a month, this was next week is the available time for him. But he's been, and he was at some of the meetings that we talked about in January of 2018 when we had the community forums. So we, so, do, we do meet with planning commission next week. And part of the requirements is a statement from them that says it meets the town plan. So that's the reason for the meeting with them next week. We've already received the, the, um, the, the answer from the regional planning commission that meets with the regional plan, but we need now the municipal plan. So that's next week. And I also like to add too that in the plan and the town plan, which Dave can speak to too, um, the Pittsburgh Village Farm is in the town plan. It specifically talks about the historic value and, and um, you know, of getting the vis village area with economic development in addition to restoration. So as you know, the you board has, here, Nancy. As you know, the board has kind of made the decision, Joe, that as long, so long as um, we're not contributing money toward this project, we can serve as the um, public face of the grant application because only municipalities are eligible for the grant. <laughs> so we'd be serving as kind of a pass through for this project. That's that's what your fellow members of the board have agreed to do. Yeah. And then we, tonight is this was the public hearing and that was the requirement for this particular grant. So. John, it's Lori Byram. May, may I just say one thing? Please. Yeah, I just wanted to um, point out that the, the reason that this, the grantors request that select boards be fully briefed on these projects is that they are interested in making sure that, uh, that all these grants are going to our community supported activities. So in order to make sure that our town is aware of what we're up to, we are feeling like we need to show up before you now and again to make sure you're fully briefed. Thanks. Thank you. Did we not already vote to, to support this? I, to my yes, recollection, we did. Yeah, yeah. yeah now we just have to go through the hearing. There's a public meeting requirement. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's why it got brought up again tonight. Mm -hmm. I, say, I knew our board was supporting it. <laughs> Yes. I also think that um, you'll hear from us now and again as we advance through the project, and um, we're grateful for the time that you can give us. Uh, we very much want to make sure that we are doing this hand in hand. Mm -hmm. What else do we have to do for formal, the formal process of the hearing since we've already you ask one last time for further questions or input, the meeting. after which you can okay. end the hearing and re renew the okay meeting. all right does anyone else have anything that they want to add well thank you that was really a really great presentation appreciate it thank you thank you, thank you very <laughs> much. appreciate your help absolutely <laughs> Don't forget to take a look at that website. All right, thank you. I know it. It looks great. <laughs> See ya. All right, so we're adjourning the hearing and opening back up the meeting. Does that work for you, Kelly? Oh, yeah, I already had it. <laughs> she probably had it down before I said anything. Okay, so all right, we are going to skip town meeting logistics. Um, and then we will uh, discuss the Humane Society's request for a coin drop. Uh, Beth Saragarian is here as she was last year for the coin drop and she'll tell us what she has in mind. Hi everybody. Um, um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Beth Saradarian, the executive director of the Rutland County Humane Society and Pittsburgh resident. And um, we did hold a coin drop last year in October on Route 7 in front of the Lothrop School 
And I know I see a lot of faces who were there helping us. So thank you for that. And um, we had our best coin drop ever. We raised about $4,000. Um, so that was fabulous. And so we're asking again, uh, if we can do one in the same location in on October 9th, um, just to help our fundraising efforts. Works for me. Sounds good for me. I make a motion that we approve it. All right, I'll, I'll second it. I'll second it. Oh, <laughs> I'll clever. Second. Third it. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. I, uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And Beth knows that I guess next steps are to get a permit in front of B-Trans with Chief Warfel's signature on it, right? I guess indeed. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Okay. Let's see. All right, so how about we will consider um, investing in an engineering study for the eventual rehabilitation of the Depot Hill Covered Bridge? It might be premature at this point, Madam oh. Chair, uh, to have much of a discussion about it. As alarming as some of the cherry-picked items on the bridge inspection reports look as to the bridge's current state, um, it might behoove us to do, as Chief Hooker has suggested to me earlier today, look at other more untraditional funding sources for engineering and construction. I'm reminded that there are historic preservation grant possibilities and I have a phone call into them. Um, and there is a, um, a, a VTRANS process by which town bridges can get VTRANS 90% um, uh, um, bridge uh, uh, work uh, funding. Just the same process as we've been through on the truck route bridge. It's all about getting higher on the state's priority list for um, work. I talked with the Regional Planning Commission today about it. Uh, the Depot Hill Bridge is apparently already on their radar, but it's somewhat um, behind in terms of priority of the truck route bridge. So for example, the truck route bridge is deemed to be the 173rd priority in the state, whereas the Depot Hill Bridge is listed at 196. Okay. So uh, <laughs> it means that we need to do um, work within the Regional Planning Commission's Transportation Committee to uh, try to get that higher on the list and to do some lobbying, perhaps with our friends um, Stephanie and Butch at, at VTRANS, and also in the meantime, to chase grant funding that might be available through the um, preservation. historic preservation um, um, grant program. Um, more can be learned in these next few days, but I've already gotten quite a lot of information in these last few days. So in the interim, while all this is going on, uh, the fact that I have stood in that bridge when something goes through it, and I understand that there are some serious issues, yeah. I tend to creep through it now. Uh, I am probably the only person that does. And when I do, they don't like it if they're behind me. So, and I don't know if we need to make this decision tonight, but I think we need to start figuring out a way to get people to actually slow down so that we extend the life of this bridge. And whether that means putting a stop sign, and I don't know if we can legally do this, but a stop sign on either end so they have to stop before they go through to slow them down. Uh, nobody's going to like that, but they're going to like it a lot less if we have to close that bridge. Right, right. So and the I columns think, aren't helping? <laughs> no. We've looked at speed bumps sometimes as a traffic slowing measure. Some, some way to, you know, slow people down because they just fly into it. And the way you come up into it, you, you, if you're going air. fast enough, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're coming up and then you're slamming down on it. Yep. But and the ability happens to be real good down there so they can get away with it. Yeah, I guess. Well, it that's the sad part. Away and open. Yeah. So I'm just throwing that out for the boy. I mean, we don't certainly need that's, to make a decision certain. tonight, but I think yeah. it's something we need to think about because oh, oh. any of these grants, it's going to take a while. No, no question. I'll talk with uh, Chad and Mike Warfel and get some ideas. We know we have the traffic feedback sign that could be of some help as well to let people know how fast they're going and remind them what the posted speed is. But all these things 
in combination should be helpful. I agree with you. Well, and the other thing, uh, and I brought this up, I don't know, last fall, whenever, well, spring, fall, is the school bus still going through it? I had an answer and I can't remember what it is. Let me get that for you because I did have correspondence with the school's dispatch people, I think. Okay. Um, because let me find that out. It's shorter to the house from West Creek than it is from the town. Yeah. There is no reason why they have to go through it that I can see. And there's, you know, clearly an overweight vehicle yeah. to what it's posted going through it. Yeah. They must go through it with uh, at least a single axle highway truck, the, the big one, don't they? God, yeah. that's putting the weight on it. Well, yeah, no, I mean, now there, there is, you know, there are I beams underneath I know. supporting I've, I've it. Been under there looking at it, right? But it, certainly the deck is in terrible, terrible shape. Well, yeah, and just the constant, yeah, just that's up right. and down is loosening it up. Because mm -hmm. I mean, you've got a lot of it's plywood now, or sections of yeah. it. Let me remind uh, myself as to what I, I was amazed to find. Back to you on that. Okay, thank you. I was amazed to find that the sides aren't even hooked to the bottom. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and the sides, in a real bridge, the sides are what hold the bottom up. Yep. Not that one. There's cool even, there's even a steel. Cool bridge is the same way. An outside steel. Cool bridge is the same way. Holding it from tipping home. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we were down there when I first got on the board. Remember, we had a trouble over the siding boards that they yep. put on. I forget how that turned out. So John, when I was going through this inspection sheet from all the years, so every time it doesn't say though, if any of the work was actually done, that was, re, that was, you know, right. recommended as you know, um, any of this. I know that the highway foreman and I get those um, and you look at them and we try to coordinate if there's something pen, uh, uh, pressing. I, I couldn't answer though okay. exactly what has been attended to and what's not. I will point out that they are remarkably inconsistent. You'll have, I think, two years ago, a quite alarming report, and then this last it's one like satisfactory seemed, or seemed less dramatic. I suppose some of it has to do with different personnel looking at the same bridge, or maybe a different sense of how little the state can afford to do, and therefore that changes how they yeah. write up the assessment. Uh, but it's same thing we saw on the truck group um, reports. Um, some of them uh, seem to say things that would scare a layperson, but then you get VTrans out there and you stand on the bouncing bridge with them and they say, oh, no, this bridge is fine. It's purely aesthetic. Yeah. So, you know, your guess, I guess, is as good as mine, but uh, it's su suffice to say it's on VTrans's very long list, but we need to find ways to preserve it um, short of the state coming to our rescue. Okay. Yeah. John, can, uh, why, can you tell me why the running boards were ever removed from that bridge? Because ap after those were taken off, that's when stuff started getting crazy. Maybe you ought to consider putting the running boards back in oh, that yeah. bridge. It was sticking yeah. up uh, for one thing. Good Wouldn't money. cost yeah. a heck of a lot of money. Right. Yep. Radar enforcement down there, start writing some tickets and it might yep. solve your problem. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't, maybe you could put some feed bumps in there and that sure as hell would. Right, right. The, a, lot, a lot of good ideas. Yeah, I think yeah. we should definitely try those first. <laughs> the uh, the Gorm Bridge was a lot of money put into that. That's quite a number of years back, but I wonder if... I have reports that I just found today online on both the extensive write-ups for the Cooley Bridge and the Gorham Bridge in the late 90s, and they both had work done at that time. Well, I think Proctor was involved with yes, the Gorham, Gorham Bridge, Bridge. Yeah. but maybe some of the routes for finance might be retraced, right. might turn out to be helpful. Yeah. I've, I've made these couple of phone calls, once to the re one to the region, but one to historic preservation, and I, I think they'll point me in the right direction. Yeah. Right. But that Gorm Bridge, my God, they had the whole thing right out of there and rebuilt it and then put it back. Yeah, it was, yeah. That was quite a long time ago. But. So I'll be following up with you, but in the meantime, let's right, see yeah. about what we can do in the meantime to preserve it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thanks. All right, uh, consider proposal to amend village burning ordinance. Yes, um, I was approached by Bradley Keith with the um, suggestion that he then put into an email that you've got in your packet. He was thinking that the current system where there's a 10 day window in the spring and another one in the fall 
for village burning um, was not as convenient to residents as it could be. And he was thinking that a way to deal with it, to give people more options is to simply convert those two 10 day periods into a one weekend per month approach. Okay. Um, and so um, Chief Hooker and I discussed it a little bit earlier today. Um, he probably has some opinions he'd like to share. Um, my initial concern is um, that you probably have burning allowed in the spring and fall on the theory that they're less likely to be dry and therefore a, a riskier time of drought. Right. But Bradley Keith points out, even in drought, he still has the discretion not to issue a permit during those windows. Mm -hmm. So again, um, it's the board's decision. Um, in any event, what we would have to do is hold our normal hearing or two, like we did with the last small amendment Good. to the burning ordinance. I think one of the other things, John, is the smoke. You less likely to have windows down in the summertime, or more likely in the summertime than you are in the spring and the fall when it's cool. I think that was one of the reasons why we put that, that in there was because people were complaining about the smoke in the village with no control over it. That's what I told John this afternoon, Hank. That it, it was a smoke issue, not so That's much right. the burning of the stuff. It was a, We had many people complain in the village because of the smoke issues. That's right. Uh, if, I would assume that if you needed a special permit, maybe he could have that authority to do that. But to open it up every single month, I think you're asking for a problem again like we had in the past. But That's I think one of, his, one of his other points, though, is that instead of it being twice a year, if it was monthly, then people wouldn't also be stockpiling huge piles of brush. But it's just as easy to get rid of a big pile all at once. Boom, it's gone. But even, I was just even, thinking about the smoke issue. More even smoke small piles, piles give you a lot of smoke. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's the smoke more than the actual piles. Well, yeah, and then I guess the issue I have with just going to weekends, I mean, there's people that work weekends and have Mondays or Tuesdays off. So now... You know, you've got an issue there. So, I, I mean, I get what he's talking about, but I think just just having it on weekends, I don't agree with that. Yeah, because you're going to open a hornet's nest again, I think. But that's just my own personal thought on it. Uh, I, I agree, Tom. I think you're right. Well, what if he just has a discretion to write? Well, well, no well yeah, I, I guess regardless. that would be my recommendation is we keep the spring and the fall and then, you know, if somebody wants to come to him and, and say, there's hey. A, and there's a, yeah, if there's a special circumstance, maybe he could grant that. Grant but that, open yes. up every month, I, I think it's a mistake. Does the fire warden have the authority to grant a permit any time that he sees fit? Or is he no, not in the village? Only not in the village. village. This is the village, not the town. That's the difference. He's restricted by the and, and, and even maybe Tom... Maybe if we had, because we've got spring and fall, maybe if we did it a point in time in the summer to give one more time when people could do it. There's that well, option too, rather than possible. a weekend a month. I mean, yeah. if you're doing it, what are you doing it in April and October? April, May, uh, June, July. I, yeah, all the way through. And you're, you're going to get complaints, I guarantee you. Well, you are. But if you got, if you're doing April and October, and you have one in July or August, that way it gives people another chance to, to burn stuff. Should, should the fire warden have a little more leeway in what he That's what I'm sees fit to do? That's what I'm thinking. I mean, well, then, then he gets calls at all hours. Right. Talk this right. The other. And, and here he has some structure. He's going to right. say consult the consult the ordinance yeah. and then talk to me. But, right. Yeah, but isn't he saying he's already? Wasn't that part of what in his emails? Yeah, um, he's hearing from some people frustrated by the strictures of the current one. Well, I thought I thought he also said he was getting a lot of calls from people, like reporting fires that they think are, you know, um, permit were you know re required when they're not. They're just fire pits. If there's if there's some consensus here, why don't I simply suggest as an alternative that we create another window between the two that exist now? Would that satisfy? His concerns. Yeah, I talked to Bradley on it before we yeah. make a final decision. Yeah. Uh, is he who is on? Uh -uh. No. In any event, we would need to have public hearings once we agree. Either on way, yeah. Ourselves. Because yeah. that is an ordinance, so you, you're going to have to have hearings on it. Okay. So let me do this. Let me follow up with Brad again. Suggest that alternate, and yep. then see if he's agreeable. And if so, we'll schedule a hearings. All right. 
Sounds good. All right, and then consider appointing alternate member of planning commission. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> as you know, Madam Chair, from your minutes tonight or your packets, uh, I was having a friendly chat with um, Rob Spensley about retiring him from his uh, illustrious career as grand juror. And he said that he still remains interested in helping the town. And I suggested, hey, we have an alternate position on the planning commission. Do you have any interest? He expressed a good interest in that, knowing that for the, for the first few months of his time anyway, he'd be learning about the process and learning about his colleagues. And then maybe if there was a vacancy, he could be considered for full membership eventually down the road. Mm -hmm. But it strikes me that someone living in the village committed to the town with a legal background would be a great asset. Yeah, he'd be great. Commission. Yeah. Wouldn't it be a good idea if the members of the existing planning commission took a look at this and then made a recommendation to us? I've got a couple answers for you, Joe. First, um, I believe that they did survey their membership to see if there were any suggestions they had, because we talked about the fact that we were losing an alternate when we elevated somebody after okay. Dave Sulia left. The other answer to you is um, it's the board's point to a point who they feel is appropriate for the planning commission. We typically haven't asked the planning commission um, their thoughts as to who they'd like to be added to their numbers. If they have suggestions, we always have been listening right. to them, yeah. but you have the danger that you get group think if you have the group appoint their replacements, you know? Well, yeah, but That's on the other hand, they have to work together. What's your thoughts on that, Dave? I mean, you've been on. The... <laughs> I I don't want to share your know, thoughts. I don't know Rob Spensley. I mean, other I, if he walked in here, I wouldn't know him. Right. Okay, but I do know uh, there tends to be people on the planning commission that like to have legal um, input, input, pers legal input, and legal gets, perceptions. It's pricey. And it does get pricey, and maybe having a lawyer sitting on there is not a bad thing. And um, again, I don't know the person, but I I guess I would recommend it. I think it's a good idea, just even just because he's a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And he's really invested in town. He's lived here his whole life. I do know him. He's very and he's very personable. Though I don't, there's going to be anyone that's going to, you know, not be able to work with him. Yeah, I also have worked with Rob on several items, and he's very personable, very knowledgeable. I think he would be an asset myself. If you need a motion, I'd make a motion. Never with met him myself. All right, I'll second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Very good. I'll let Rob know, and I'll let Mark Winslow know. Perfect. Okay, and then finally, right? Yep, finally, discussing town meeting logistics. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I'll just tee it off, Butch, before you jump in, um, just to report four things, and then we can expand on them. Um, we will need signatures on a revised town warning tonight, um, because, of course, as we've learned recently in our webinar, those of us who attended that one about town meeting, we learned that we no longer need to designate or elect a grand juror or a town agent. Those are no longer required. So we've written up the warning the same as it was before, except it gets rid of those two items for um, election. Second point is that I have notified the town moderator, Kevin Carvey, that his debut will be postponed until next year. This was gonna be his first stint as town moderator and that the select board will host the informational meeting to be held the Monday night before the balloting on Tuesday by Australian ballot on March 2nd. That leads me to the third issue, which is we need to have a discussion about um, the Australian ballot and whether we wanna take advantage of the governor's authorization to mail everybody a ballot to minimize the amount of in-person voting and the risks associated with that in this COVID era. Finally, um, I'd like the select board's input official input as to whether we want to skip listing the property tax and utility 
delinquent customers this year only because again of COVID and its financial impacts. Mm -hmm. We had talked about that previously. I don't know that I had a, an official position from the board about that. I like the idea of not shaming people this year. What's everyone else saying? I agree. I agree. Listing the delinquent taxes, I don't see any problem with it. We've done it in the past, and we've uh, always viewed it as effective. Some it, people are motivated by well, embarrassment. Yeah, if, if you're worried about having somebody see that you didn't pay your taxes, you'll do something and pay them. The only question is whether this year, because so many people are suffering with COVID and have had financial setbacks, whether we might give it a pass for this one. And I think in the past, if I'm correct, we have voted for keeping town meeting exactly the way it was and the, and the town report the same way it was. We make suggestions in the past to make changes, and, and the voters voted them down. Huh. We decided not. What, what's our tax rate? What? Where do we stand right now as far as taxes? Uh, I've been given a memo from Linda today saying that we're actually doing quite well. Delinquent taxes as of June 30, 2020, were 154,000. Um, delinquent taxes as of the previous year or 170,000. So, so we're doing, we're doing, doing relatively well, maybe because in a difficult time, people are focusing on the most important thing, which is their home. I don't know. I can't, I can't do the psychoanalysis, but that's what she's reported to me. Well, we decided uh, not. Uh, if, if we, you know, I wouldn't change anything in the middle of the stream myself. It, it's always been this way. And uh, it's probably the same people that are delinquent every year. That's, that's largely true, but one of the things I thought this might accomplish, as opposed to shaming people in a difficult year, was it also would allow us to sidestep the whole Blanchard issue. All right. Well, we decided okay. not, not to push the for the, you know, the... Yeah, we didn't, we didn't do tax sale this year. And I think that was, that was a, a sign of good faith for everybody. As is level funding. And if we, uh, yeah, and if we need to do that once again, if this thing continues on, I, I'd be, I'd suggest that as well. But uh, in a couple of years, hopefully, it's straightened out and people will be back where we, where we should be. So, am I sensing there's a maybe a, a, a split, but a consensus in favor of leaving it in the town report? I would, I would like to omit it for this year, so. I, I would agree with omitting it just for this year. I mean, I understand that it's an effective tool, but, you know, uh, this is kind of a special circumstance. I will go along with that, provided it's this year only. Because this year only. No, I'm, I think we're I, all on this year only. Only. Yeah. I make the motion we go and remove them for this year only. I second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All opposed. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Yeah, fine. <laughs> I, yeah, I understand. I just, I just think <laughs> this one here. Oh, it's it saves, hard us, feelings. No, it saves <laughs> us two expensive pages in the. Time. And the only reason yeah. I voted for that was because I didn't pay my taxes on time. <laughs> <laughs> Can I rescind my second? <laughs> We're not going to publish your name, but we will foreclose. Do yeah, forthwith. <laughs> Special you, tax day. You go back many years and my family's name was in there. <laughs> um, so I guess we're back to this whole issue of uh, election and balloting and maybe, <coughs> maybe Butch and Helen would like to be heard about that, sure. um, among others. Sure. Helen, do you want me to kick it off? Go ahead. Okay, so thank you uh, and thank you all. Uh, so today we received the... Uh, uh, guidance from the Secretary of State on town meeting, on voting, et cetera. Uh, the legislature has passed the bill we talked about earlier, which is 848, which HA48, which uh, talks about town meeting, uh, how to conduct town meetings and what you can and can't do. Uh, it, I'm trying to recall, and, and, uh, and I, I don't know, and maybe you can help me, uh, board, have you voted to apply the Australian ballot system to all questions at the town meeting. Yes. 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 You have, you have, okay. Yeah. So we check that. You can check that box off. Okay. Uh, 
you're not moving the data town meeting, correct? Correct. So with that, uh, there there is a provision in in, uh, in in the guidance we got today that people that would like to file a petition still have 20 days before the town meeting uh, to file that petition, but it's not going to affect you. It's not going to affect your date because you're not moving your town meeting date. So the regular dates apply, right, Helen? Yes. Yeah. So so if people can still put their name on the ballot till 20 days before the election without collecting signatures. So that's still in place. Okay. Uh, the question came up uh, to me yesterday uh, in, in H48, uh, the, the, the phrase a municipal uh, legislative body. And in the, in the case of town of Pittsburgh, that's the uh, select board. Uh, so, so the select board in your infinite wisdom, wisdom has chosen not to move the date. That would have been your 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 choice, but you need to authorize uh, the BCA and and the clerk, uh, who is our chief election official, to mail out the Australian ballot questions to everybody in town. And that has been and just just on an aside, that has been the governor's recommendation all along. And and I I got to say from a personal standpoint, that worked slicker than slick uh, uh, on, on during the general election to do that. And I'll get to that in a minute, but, but don't, but I would remind you, uh, Madam Chair, that you, you'll need to vote on that. And I would suggest you vote on it this evening. Okay. Uh, that, that way the clerk can proceed with the work that she needs to do to prepare that. Uh, Just to point out, okay. Helen's working with Brandon as well and the school. Yep because of a combined need for a combined ballot. Sure, and then the school, even there's, there's several rules that came out within the uh, uh, guidance today concerning the school and school procedure. It doesn't affect the town at all, but it, it really makes a mess for the schools, but that's not your problem, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> you don't need to know about it. Yeah. So in, in regards to mailing of the ballots uh, to, to everyone in town, uh, the, the BCA and the clerk are very familiar with how to handle those and the procedures that the Secretary of, State's, Secretary of State rolled out today that I, we did, I think Stephanie and I both mailed them to John, uh, uh, pretty much mirror the general election procedures that many of you were involved in. Uh, the fire department uh, has officially said yes to moving the balloting down there, uh, down to the firehouse as we did before. Uh, but I want to talk costs of ma mailing the ballots. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the legislature's joint bills committee approved two million dollars to assist towns in this effort to mail ballots. So, about major costs, and, and this is major costs, and this is this is up to the secretary of state. So this is what he has decided. Uh, as of today, officially. Uh, these costs will be reimbursable is mailing of the ballots, uh, production of the ballots, uh, which, which, which would indicate that it's only for increase from previous years uh, to accommodate the use of the ballot and or ballot mailing. So Helen will have to figure that one out if there's extra costs involved and there's probably gonna be because She's going to print a lot more ballots. Uh, she's going. To, it will pay for the return postage on the ballot envelopes, um, and it will pay for tabulator programming costs. And for those of you that have counted with a tabulator, that's really important. Otherwise, it would be a total hand count. Uh, and then production, production and mailing of any postcards that you may want to mail as a town. To, to, to outreach to people to let them know that it's happening. And that, that may not be a bad idea uh, to just send everybody in town a postcard. Sorry, Helen. Uh, <laughs> to say we're going no, to be that's, sending that's you. That's an easy one. <laughs> yeah, to say we're going to be sending you a ballot and you can vote the same way you did the general election or something along those lines. But those costs will also be covered uh, within that uh, $2 million appropriation. Uh, we have a newsletter coming out soon, so we can probably put that in there as well. That would be really helpful, oh, yeah. John. It, yeah. But it's all pretty. It's all, uh, and, and that's the that's the high points of what's happened. The the the, the procedural points. Uh, Helen will 
advice the, the, the BCA on, on what to do and how to do it. And they're very similar to, again, they're very similar to what we did in the uh, uh, general election. Presidential. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the presidential election. Unfortunately, a change that's been made concerning the school ballots, uh, and, 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 I'm, and this, this is the ruling from the Secretary of State, and I have a call into them. Uh, actually, they called me tonight, but I wasn't home. Uh, there's no more commingling of the, of the boat, votes for the school district. Uh, they are going to allow the towns that we will be able to, Pittsburgh or Brandon or whomever, will be able to count their own votes for the school district vote, which for me, I object to that because that ballot is supposed to be commingled with the entire district. So you can't single out a town. Let's say Pittsburgh votes against the, the budget and Brandon votes for it then that could create animosity between the two towns. And that's, I don't think that's a good idea, but that's, that's in the, Helen, did you read that today at all? I did see that. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's, that's unfortunate, but I don't make, I don't make these rules. Secretary of State does, but I, but I, I'm going to object to, object to that. And, and for, for those of you that count ballots, you will not be able to run ballots prior to, the evening on town meeting, unlike you did during the general election where you were able to count ballots. And I see Dave's got his hands up. Yeah, yeah. you mentioned that uh, return postage was gonna be covered by the state, but you did not say whether mailing the ballots out was gonna be covered by the state. Okay, but it does say that. It says mailing ballots to voters. That was the first one. Okay, all right. All right. They yeah. only pay well, maybe I missed it. That's in addition to last year's fees. So if there was two hundred dollars last year and this year it costs a thousand, yeah, covers the difference. Okay. All right. Yeah. So yeah, so so there shouldn't be there to mail the ballots. In theory, there shouldn't be any excess cost to the town. Is that right, Helen? Or would you agree with me on that? That is right. Yeah. They're going to cover any overage. Um, so we should be all set. Okay. So to just to sum it up quickly, I just I'm, I'm thinking you voted to do Australian ballot. Uh, I'm thinking you voted to do the uh, meeting uh, uh, electronically, and I so if you've done those two things, the only thing you need to do is uh, vote to mail all the voters a, a ballot. So moved. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any any opposed? Now, will they be able to drop them off at the fire station on, on the date they're due? Like it? Yeah. Yes, sir. It'll be exactly yeah. as it was before. They can bring them to the town clerk's office early, just like that an absentee worked. ballot. That worked. They can, that worked pretty good, I think, the last yep. time. Yep. They can drop yeah. them off at the firehouse, or on the day of the voting, they can call uh, – uh, the election official in charge and have somebody pick the ballot up for them. And so, yeah. the, the, the difference here from last year, of course, is that on the town floor, from the floor, it's harder to vote no on these ballot questions. So yep. it just is incumbent on us to do a good messaging job with letter to editors and Facebook and website pointing out the level funded budgets this year. Yeah, I think... Uh, that's important. I think you've done a great job. Uh, I think today's reporter reported that you had a no, level funded budget, <laughs> which, was, which was great. Yeah. Not you. We, I got that. Well, actually, John, unfortunately, the Roland Herald uh, headline over your article said Pittsburgh's budget's going up. I saw that. But then the very first paragraph talks about how we Indeed. level funded. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> If only they'd let me write the articles for them. <laughs> yeah, so you might want to get a hold of Keith Whitcomb and have him retract that. Yeah, good luck. Good luck with that. Oh, no. yeah, I know. <laughs> so the other thing, John, you were going to give us an analysis at this meeting, but you can certainly do it at the next. Yeah. What the average homeowner, you know, uh, uh, to say a hundred thousand, two hundred, three, whatever yeah. the actual town <clears throat> cost, tax cost is. Right, right. I think it's imperative that you get that out. I thought you were talking about. I thought we were talking about having it ready for questions at town meeting, but I can certainly have it for the next meeting. Well, no, I think it's something that should be on in our communication. In our, we can do it at town meeting too, but you've got people that are going to be voting before yeah. town meeting. Very good point. So I think that needs to be. Yep. 
I know, and I don't know if very it's, clear. Yep. I don't know if it's possible to get Gene Collins to call in or because um, they meet at the same times. But it would be nice to get an in-depth explanation. Oh, I think they all, they always have their own informational session, and maybe yep. Butch. Maybe but isn't it also on a plan on that third Wednesday? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, no, they're, I believe they're going to have, hold their informational meeting at the same time that they typically would, John. That's the last thing. Which, which, like, which is like a week early. In other words, ours is always the night before voting, and theirs right. usually is like the Wednesday before the voting. So yes, we will not think that's, that. We won't, okay. That's, that's still her intention, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, okay. and as Helen said, they're going to piggyback uh, their, uh, their, their ballots into our ballot. Uh, when we mail the ballots out. Yep. Yep. The school awesome. portion, the school portion of the budget is going to take an increase, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Exactly. Well, you know, we had some, we had some great news yesterday. Uh, as, as you can imagine, and you remember we were talking about a nine cent increase on, uh, mm -hmm. in the ed tax. Yeah. That was the original proposal. So yesterday, uh, the emergency board met, uh, and got a fiscal update. And that nine cents has now been reduced to 2.8 cents uh, potential increase. That's not and uh, that's before the legislature, and that's without using reserve funds. So that's before the legislature gets a hold of it, and hopefully we'll be able to pare it down a little more. So that's a, that's a pretty pretty nice place to start at 2.8 percent. Big improvement. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Sorry, kind of anticlimactic, right? Yeah, well. <laughs> Thank you, Butch. I know. Thanks so much, Butch and Helen. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all. Good night. Have right, <laughs> fun. Have fun. All right. We're just going to wait on Tom Hooker to call us in a few minutes to join us for executive session, right? Okay. We'll see you all later. Yeah.